Welcome to another edition of Plank of the Week, one of the most successful TV shows ever in the history of Talk Radio TV, which hasn't been going very long. Uh, I'm delighted to say that this week I'm in the company of Will Geddes, uh, who sometimes is described as super security consultant, uh, and Emily Carver, who's sometimes uh, described as a super commentator. Of course, I've used the word super because it's the in thing to do this week. Welcome to both of you. Thank you very Thank much, you Mike. Thanks for the invite. Not that I'm in any way suggesting that you might end up on Dominic Cummings' list of weirdos, uh, where you could I end up know, entering Mike. Downing Street and then exiting <laughs> very quickly before the end of the first week because you've called yourself a super forecaster. Well, I have to say, as a forecaster, it's a pretty poor job if you can't <laughs> see when you're actually going to be kicked out. Yes, isn't no, it? exactly yeah. right. But, Will, why don't you start us off with your first nominee? Wow. Where do I start? Mike, really, it is a challenge to try and narrow it down to three. I mean, even in the last 24 hours, there have been so many contenders mm. that have arisen. And I am sad to say that Sadiq Khan comes back up to Tremendous. the list again. So even yeah. though he was first in the last week, he's still uh, coming up at first, as it were. Oh, he's phenomenal. Uh, he, keeps, he keeps dropping the plank bombs everywhere he goes. He's carpet, yeah. carpet planking, yes. could we say? I think he's on a roll. <laughs> yeah. Definitely on a roll. Carpet planking. So what has he done in the last 24 hours? Well, I think one of the best ones was his tweet that went out saying, trans women are women, trans men are men, non-binary people are non-binary, all gender identities are valid. Now, and not, so say all of us. And so if you just sing us, it, it sounds better. It's brilliant. Well, I, I wouldn't <laughs> want to inflict that kind of pain on your ears <laughs> yeah. you know, collectively. But it's, it's astounding. And then he just dropped the next plank bomb today mm. where he's gone off for a jolly boys trip to, uh, to Belgium, to Brussels, uh, to talk about the associate citizenship that's been so successful since it was launched in 2016. Oh, yes. And we'll have... Absolutely no bearing whatsoever yeah. on the This is the thing where you get to be an associate citizen of the European Union. Yeah. Despite the fact that Britain has now left it. Yeah. I, okay. I mean, for the, for the older watchers here, it's probably about as valid as the Tufty Club. Yes. Yeah. What is the you point won't know of what that? that is. <laughs> no, yeah. I don't know what that is. <laughs> but this is at a time when, you know, the government are trying to negotiate a trade deal. And there he is, Sadiq mm. Khan. You know, this is very much above his pay grade, I think most of us really would agree. Yeah, he absolutely. shouldn't be doing this. He shouldn't be doing it, and he should be stopped from doing it. The trouble is, Sadiq Khan, he doesn't appear to have a boss. I don't know who he has to answer to. He doesn't appear to answer to but does he have a boss? the government. Well, surely. I mean, obviously the electorate, <laughs> I suppose, who put him there. But he doesn't appear to have anyone who ticks him off when he does something wrong. You know, when he has his little, um, you know, afternoons of, of being quizzed by people on the London Assembly, he doesn't appear to bother answering anybody. And I know Boris used to be quite sort of dismissive of people when they asked him questions. But, but you know, I know Susan Hall, who's the leader of the Tories in the London Assembly. And she's like, he just doesn't bother. He doesn't care what anybody says. He doesn't seem to have any sort of, um, you know, um, focus or compass of whether he's doing right or wrong. And when he does something wrong, Nobody seems to actually say to him, actually, you shouldn't have done that. I think, I think where he's so fundamentally flawed um, <laughs> is that he doesn't listen to anybody in London. I mean, everybody keeps going on about knife crime. Everybody mm. keeps going on about just the deterioration of, of just general civility in London. And he's not addressing it. What's he doing in Brussels? I mean, yeah. the whole yeah. point of him being out there is... Really? Are we paying for that? I'm you know, sure we who, are. Who is actually paying for those trips? Yeah. And, and what will he actually bring back which is going to value London? Hmm. And his staffing costs. Yeah. Have you seen how they've ballooned? Oh, absolutely. So He's Boris millions, Johnson. millions, right? Yeah. 60 million or something like that? Yeah, over 65 million now. And that's nearly double the amount that uh, Boris Johnson was spending. And he likes PR stunts too. But hmm. I mean, Sadiq Khan just takes it. So we outspend Take Boris Johnson another. and PR stunts in London Mayor's Office is doing pretty well. And somebody, I think, did a, uh, can, uh, an equation whereby they could have hired, they could have hired something like 10,000 extra police officers with that kind of money for London alone, which he could have done. He has the ability to do that. He doesn't have to say all the police have to come from central government. You know, he really is quite remarkable. He won it last week because, of course, uh, he was promoting this uh, poster on the underground oh, yeah. with loads of naked people um, <laughs> uh, saying how brown skin was beautiful, right? Which is all very well, fine yeah. and good. Yeah, unfortunately, wrong with unfortunately that. he previously banned the famous bikini girl picture because yeah. it was a white girl in a yellow bikini getting a tan. And apparently that was not something that he wanted to see on the underground. Apparently she looked too good. Yeah, she looked too good. Really? <laughs> but apparently can't have that on the underground, that, Mike. No. What you want is really bad, ugly people. You want really people. just lots of ugly pictures. But, I mean, the, the people know. in his poster looked pretty good too. 
I'm yeah. sorry, you know, he hasn't exactly, you know, picked a lot of people. I never saw the poster. Oh, well, uh, and I'm on the, the underground pretty much every I'm day. Sure, I'm sure yeah. you will see it when you're out there. But it's yeah. a very good nomination. The good thing as well about keeping people like Sadiq Khan in the top ten every week is at the end of the month we round up the aggregate score that people have had and then you yeah. can become plank of the month. Because in January, I think it was the BBC who won the overall, you know, sort of, um, what do they call that... Uh, um, uh, that when you win everything in uh, the Olympics, they give you some kind of special prize. A special commendation. Yeah. So a special commendation <laughs> with the BBC. So maybe Sadiq Khan will be going for that. Emily, what's your first uh, um, suggestion? So my first suggestion, I think it's someone that's also probably been in your Plank of the Week awards a few times. I'm going to go with Meghan. Yes, Meghan Markle. Meghan lovely. Markle. Yes, we do like Meghan. <laughs> I like to have a little look through... Uh, have a little look at their Instagram every now and again just to see if it's still running. Yeah. Because I think it's absurd that it's still running. Sadly, I don't follow them. I don't think uh, I could... I don't think I could stand following it on Instagram. I don't follow them, but I have a little check-up. Oh, OK. Anyway, Sussex Royal, the Instagram. Mm. Uh, Megan decided that it would be a good idea to post a little sort of throwback behind the scenes. Oh, this is the Vogue video, isn't of, it? Yeah, of her... Um, isn't it awful? It is awful. It's I haven't seen awful. it yet. It's absolutely awful. Oh. Where have I been? It's vomitorious. It's really, really, really good. Really, vomitorious, really. that's my new word <laughs> for the week. And she'd also <laughs> apparently been advised by the palace not to put it out. Yeah, exactly. So the timing was terrible. The optics were awful. She came across as so self-aggrandizing. It was two people sort of, you know, just stroking each other's egos. And it was really awful. And also at a time when she'd literally just given the boot to all of her UK yeah, staff. Yeah, just fired everyone in, in, in nice. Britain, all 15 of them, some of whom will actually be made redundant because yeah. they won't be absorbed my, elsewhere. My feeling it could have been perhaps a distraction technique because you heard about the, the royal family's website this week, didn't you? And that it got hacked. I didn't hear and about And directed no. to a Chinese porn site. <laughs> <laughs> so, seriously? The, yeah, seriously. So, uh, I mean, I was thinking of putting the admins for the royal family's official website actually on Plank of the Week. But yeah. uh, there are even better Did anyone think of calling it that's the Crowner virus? Because that's what I would have put the headline as. That's it. But, God, I love that. Really like to that. a Chinese porn site with yeah. live video feeds. Awesome. Dear me. Yeah. I thought they weren't allowed to uh, porn in China. Uh, but I guess oh, you learn yes. something every day. We they need to go for ways. a drink, Michael. <laughs> okay, all right. There are things that I need to know. But, I mean, the other thing that I found astonishing uh, uh, around Meghan Markle was at the uh, Labour uh, debate, it was, as it was laughingly called this week, on Channel 4, Rebecca Long-Bailey was asked if she would like to keep the royal family. And her reasoning for saying yes, she would, was that she'd like to see Queen Meghan one day, which is not only bizarre... It's probably so impossible yeah. as, 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 a, as, a, as, a, as an end result because she's so far away from the throne. But this kind of vir endless, endless virtue signalling by people who think that people like us who don't really like Meghan Markle very much are somehow racist. She's like, oh, well, of course, uh, we'll just make this uh, remark and everyone in the Labour Party will go, oh, isn't that nice? But I mean, speaking to people... Queen Meghan. Even people who were pro-Meghan to begin with and have now gone off her. Mm. Seriously, I imagine that if you took a poll of the country, it would be, you know, a very... Small minor they're minority. Going off who a, still they're going off her pretty fast in North yeah. America as well. The other thing about oh the yeah, video, I saw that. Yeah. Apparently, the, the the paparazzi and the press are really getting sour yeah. on them entirely. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Because I think it's it was in the wake of the Goldman Sachs yeah. and the J.P. Morgan sort of talks that yes, they did. Exactly. And although Goldman Sachs, I know for a fact, will generally not pay for speakers because it's you know you're talking for Goldman, so mm. yeah, yeah, that's going to be and it is very very good credentials. They got a quite a considerable earn from the J.P. Morgan, mm. I believe. So. So I understand. Uh, yeah. But yeah, but the, the thing about the video is, well, it shows her to be really craven in her kind of ambition because mm. it actually shows her having the conversation with the Vogue editor, which starts off as, you know, maybe we could do something to her basically pushing him to let her edit the whole yeah. thing. <laughs> and she's like, well, maybe, maybe I'll just push you a little more. And he's going, OK. You know, and suddenly she's the guest editor of Vogue magazine. So it wasn't something that they thought of. Um, it wasn't something that they came up with. It was something that she basically begged for. I love it. They're hustling, market, aren't they? They're hustling. Yeah. Proper. But, but to market that, she only got that because she was a member of the royal family. Yeah. To then market that several months later, once you've decided to uh, depart, mm. is just... Yeah, but it's, it's, it's not awful. that dissimilar to Harry approaching, because apparently he was supposed to uh, turn up for a, a big Royal Marines uh, commemorative ceremony uh, for the bombing that took place at one of the one of the barracks. I can't remember which one, for, you know, stupid leaving me to forget. But he turned up for the Disney King um, 
Uh, the Lion King. The Lion King, yes. Oh, Premier, yeah. didn't he? And that then was he, when he, he was cornered pumping, Bob Eisner, uh, wasn't he? <laughs> pumping the Disney chief. Yeah, and saying, she does voiceovers. Voiceover work. <laughs> you oh, can yeah. see the wife's face just going. Just beggar's belief, doesn't it? Yeah, it that's really just is. Brilliant. It's so shocking. They're, they're out there Well, listen, that's a very strong start from both of you, I have to say. I mean, I'm coming in with somebody who hasn't yet been in the planks list. Uh, as in, so it's going to be a new entry for me. It's, Cam it's Cambridge Police Force oh. or Cambridge Police Service, as they know that call themselves now. Uh, because not only did they actually watch and stand by while Extinction Rebellion uh, formed a roadblock, mm -hmm. which basically closed off half the, t the city and, and prevented an ambulance from getting by on its way to a hospital. Um, they said they couldn't reopen the roads on the grounds that they needed special powers to do so, even though apparently they didn't need special powers to shut the roads. No, so they let them do that. Next day, uh, as we saw uh, in much of, the, much of the paper's coverage today, um, they allowed Extinction Rebellion to then go to Trinity College and dig up the lawn, which has apparently been there for thousands of years. And prize winning as um, well. And it's got all sorts of ancient trees wow. on it. They then took the, uh, you know, the, sort of the mud and the dirt from the lawn and dumped it in a nearby Barclays bank. And the police just standing by watching them. And also they were apparently daubing um, some obscene messaging yeah. and graffiti all over the paving as right. well. I and mean, I don't know about you, Will. I mean, you've been closer to law enforcement than I have. But I mean, if I went down to sort of, you know, Westminster <laughs> and decided to start digging up the Houses of Parliament lawn, yeah. I'm pretty sure <laughs> yeah. people would be on <laughs> me with some machine guns, right, <laughs> yeah. fairly quickly and dragging me off to the nearest tower. Oh, yeah, absolutely, you know, without question. What is question. it that Extinction Rebellion have got? that somehow the police don't want to arrest them. I don't know. I think I think the problem with some of the police service in Cambridge might fall into this uh, into this bracket is there's this whole self-effacing, how are we going to look on social media? How are we going to look in the press? And they'd rather hesitate than actually do something. But you're absolutely right. I mean, there are some clear infractions of the law in terms of what they did there, in terms of criminal damage, in terms of restricting the public highway, yeah call uh, public disorder, all sorts of factors there. And to be honest, why they showed in action, I have no idea, Mike, but I mean, it's, it's it doesn't give confidence to the rest of us. I mean, it was infuriating in London when the police officer was seen, you know, skateboarding. Yes. When Extinction Rebellion had blockaded bridges, blockaded main pathways to hospitals, even yeah. to St. Thomas's Hospital in and Westminster. And for two weeks, practically, they shut down yeah, a couple weeks. of the bridges. Yeah. And I was walking along thinking, what, where are the police? Yeah. What are they doing? Yeah. Why are these people allowed to continue doing this? Yeah. And the problem is, is that you have celebrities and politicians, um, you know, going along with it, celebrating their cause, yeah. their tactics. And I really think they should be holding their head in shame, to be honest, at the moment. Yeah. Well, I've, it's I've only going to get worse. It's I'm, only going to Yeah, escalate. exactly. If you don't ban them from doing it, or you don't make it, they don't make them some kind of prescribed group, yeah. it'll continue. I've always said, surely we could, we could get some kind of football banning order type thing, yep. you know, where you find hooligans and you identify precisely who they are, mm -hmm. they're not allowed to travel to football matches abroad. Yeah. Surely you could do the same with Extinction Rebellion, these nutcases, and say, I'm sorry, you've been identified as a troublemaker, you've previously vandalised property, um, you're not allowed into the, the inner circle of any city of Britain. Well, they get given a sort of ASBO of sorts. Yeah, yeah exactly, an antisocial behaviour yeah. order. So it restricts them, obviously, from going into key areas. But, I, you know, I'm a Londoner born and bred, and there's nothing more frustrating than these clowns getting out there. And don't get me wrong, I mean, someone said it and encapsulated it really nicely the other day when they said, I kind of believe in the process of protest until I meet the protesters. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it is so true in the, state, in, in the case of Extinction Rebellion. I don't think anybody's opposed to climate change. Everybody needs to be more aware of it. Everybody needs to do something to contribute to it. But, but we don't need to be told shape. to do more because we're doing more than anybody else already. Well, exactly. But I mean, I, you know, but I don't see any harm in there being a, a gentle, persuasive message. And I don't think Extinction Rebellion are getting their point across in any shape or form no. that is positive or productive. All it's doing is serving to alienate them. Well, to be honest, one of my favourite images of last year was those mad. guys getting dragged off the tube train oh, yeah. in Canning Town <laughs> and being given a good kicking. A good you know, friend of mine I know they're not supposed to encourage time. that. Yeah. But, you know, what a, you know, these people who haven't got jobs yeah. up against the real people of London who are struggling to get, you know, enough money to get by, living outside in the sort of, you know, what you might call outer London, the east end of outer London, a lot of, you know, foreign workers, guys who have come here to make their, you know, better life, being stopped from going to work by these bozos. Yeah. You know? And yeah. it's not even just about the climate. Their message is strongly anti-capitalist. It is, yes. They want to bring down the whole system. I mean, mm. they say it with their placards. Mm. Most of them have the socialist workers' placards, yeah. you know, system change, not climate the change. The trots rules are pain in the I know. And these people <laughs> are mostly seemingly sort of middle-class students yeah. who have decided, what, were there about a dozen in Cambridge who were digging up At that lawn? At least, yeah. And yeah. where were the people stopping them? I know.
I know. To be honest, I, 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 I kind of just hope that I'm not around when that's kind of happening because <laughs> I, I don't know whether I'd be able to control myself. No, I know. Well, that is the difficulty, isn't it? I hope they don't come anywhere near me or my little. <laughs> Who's your second nomination, Will? Oh, well, we're going to go back to the Labour Party. It's got to be them. <laughs> I, I, you know, and there are two. Because it, it is like the echo party, isn't mm. it? They're, they're just kind of, I don't know what, you know, it's a bit like watching a car it crash in slow motion. Yeah. It's kind the of, wheels coming you, off. You can see that it's the clown car and all the wheels yeah, yeah. are coming off and the doors are falling off. And they're doing it to themselves. This is what's so remarkable. I mean, I, they're, they're not even presenting themselves as a decent contender. I mean, mm. Keir Starmer's got a shoe in as far as I'm concerned yeah. because Lisa Nandy, the stuff she's coming up with, Dawn Butler, the stuff she's coming yeah. up with. I mean, it's just mental. It's I, I just don't get it. Keir Starmer doesn't seem to know what to do, though, because on the one hand, he's embarrassed that he's the only bloke left in it. Right? Yeah. And so he's desperately trying to sort of re-identify himself, presumably as a woman. Can you imagine? You know, <laughs> you know because I mean, he's, get him he's, in. he doesn't know, he, and he can't be too aggressive or else he'll be accused of being aggressive. It was hilarious yeah. the other week when they had a, a debate and he said, let's not get down to petty point scoring. At which point you go, no, surely that's, that's what, what a debate it's about, is. Man. It's about petty point scoring exactly. so that you win the debate. He just doesn't seem to get it. He's now said that he thinks that the Labour Party policy during the election on Brexit was actually good because he made up the policy. But there was no policy. It was, you know, yeah, well, we'll we think if, if you voted leave, then we agree with you. Uh, but if you voted remain, we also agree with you. That was their policy. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just, I you, know, it beggars belief, doesn't it? Anything you'd Starmer. like to contribute? Are you, well, are you nominating I, all of them? <laughs> All because of them, they the were whole all Labour Party. I am, Mike. The whole well, lot. Put I... them all in the bucket and then throw them down the well. I mean, really. To be honest, I, I'd love for them to step forward. I'd love for everyone to turn around and go, you know what? They're a possible contender. Yeah. There's someone clever in there. I think Keir Starmer is, is kind of fingernails, isn't mm. it? He's hanging on by. Um, and I'd love them to come forward with something. But literally, I mean, we thought Corbyn was bad. Yeah. You know, it's always getting worse. I Do you know. know what I mean? They are worse. They are worse. Um, Kiss Tama with that Brexit policy. How he can stand there and say, I got it right, yeah. is just beyond it's, me. It's unbelievable. <laughs> and Rebecca Long Bailey, who said last night, no, um, you shouldn't keep going about Corbynism. It's not Corbynism, it's socialism. As if that's any better. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, people still don't want She's that. She's going to be my next plank. Yeah. Um, just for all the things she said recently. Um, can I go on to say? You can. Okay, so Rebecca Long Bailey is my second plank because she not only said that socialism is aspirational, mm. which is an oxymoron in my view. It is. It's aspirational if you haven't got any money and you want to take somebody else's money, but it's not really <laughs> she, aspirational in the sense of aspirational. <laughs> no. She also, she also said that, uh, which you pointed out, I think, on Twitter, mm. that Clement Attlee yes. was her uh, favourite Labour leader in the last 50 years. <gasps> Brilliant. Despite yeah. the fact that he was... That he died more than 50 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> and then also... Great. Yeah. Also, because she decided to sort of um, sign up to the trans rights campaign's mm. list, 12th list of pledges. Yeah. And these are deeply censorious. They're essentially saying that groups like Women's Place, which um, stand up for women's rights, mm. have no place in the modern Labour Party. And this includes, oh, yeah, throwing people out, yeah, oh, yeah, this yeah, includes this. MPs yeah. like Jess Phillips, who have raised concerns over refuges. Yeah. This is over, you know, men who uh, self-identify as women, whether they can be allowed into uh, female prisons yeah. or into female refuges and a lot of women have rightly in my view come out and said you know what this isn't right yeah just because well, you I say you're a woman doesn't uh, mean you're a woman activist the other day on talk radio saying um well of course it's not about um gender it's about what they have in common so that if you're a trans woman i.e a man who wants to go and stay in a refuge with a load of other women you have more in common with them because you're also in hiding from a man maybe or a woman it all gets very confusing, to be honest. I mean, I'm, I'm not quite, You know, I, I mean, I blame Sadiq Khan for the so definitions. So do I. Them and the Cambridgeshire police. <laughs> the thing is, as a, as a woman, though, it's, it's very demeaning yeah. to say that just because a man says they're a woman, yeah. that therefore they are, without any of the experiences mm. that go along, without the biology. Yeah. So it's just crazy that this kind of, I don't know, how they're able to continue talking like this. I mean, I say often, because you often end up in, in this kind of conversation where people are kind of sitting there going, how do we get here exactly? Yeah. And I, I, how do we I, get out of here? I That's believe very question. firmly that yeah. we haven't got enough to worry about. You know, that literally, we, because we, our lives are we so... We need a war. Yeah, our <laughs> lives are so kind of, you know, hey. cosseted. <laughs> our lives are so, um, um, you know, perfect, for want of a better word, that the most we can worry about now is, is you know, well, hmm. maybe somebody could identify as something else and why should you stop them from doing it? 
And I mean, it's so bourgeois when you think about it. It's have so ridiculous. Read, yeah. Have you read Douglas Murray's book yes. on this, Madness of Crowds? Yeah. He looks into this and he says, you know, it's sort of like a religion, this social mm. justice stuff. Yeah. You have to look for the biggest victim. Yeah. Who's, who's got the most victim status? And then you have to fit everything around that. So yeah. trans, trans rights are now the most important, the, the biggest mm. victim. So therefore, that's And you have to be seen to be yeah. part, part, part of it all. Supersedes to, women's you, rights. You can't be against it. Yeah. This is what I find so you some kind of Nazi. I, I find astounding the fact that th this is a community, you know, and I've got some great mates in the gay community who even by them are completely confused, mm. you know, by the whole process. And, and I understand <laughs> there is that community, there is that section. Uh, of the population that have difficulty identifying or do want sure, to re-identify yeah. and you know what good luck to them and I wish you well on your journey however does that mean that everybody else has to bow and scrape around that yeah. process to what is a minority and I you know and th this may cause a lot of hate on your feed on the yeah, YouTube yeah. channel but it's well, it a little do. bit like the child at the party that is saying I don't want to play with everybody, so everybody's got to do what I want to mm. do. And it's like, and I, I, that's probably a bad analogy, but it, it's a case of the minority dictating to the majority. Mm. And, and that's wrong. It should be an intermesh between the two. Everybody does what they need to do. But, this, but I think you're absolutely right in terms of there's this creation of a crisis, creation mm. of a drama, when, to be honest, I'm sure, and certainly friends of mine in the gay community have told me, uh, LGBTs, actually want to be kind of left alone, just mm. get on with their own thing. Exactly, yeah. and people not just be want to be left alone. Pushed yeah. out into the headlines. Well also, it's, it's, it's certainly not true to say that everyone who is involved in the LGBT trans debate is in any way agree in agreement, because they're not. No. Mm -hmm. you know, you know no. the gay community does not celebrate necessarily everything that the trans community celebrates. So, yeah. you know, they shouldn't all be treated as if they're all of one mind, and that everybody else who doesn't agree with that particular thought is somehow in the wrong, because we're not. Yeah. No. Simple as that. It's like somebody getting on a plane, and I know they do this with nuts now, which drives me slightly insane. Where they go, please don't eat any nuts on a plane. Well, why not? That's why I always well, tell you. Do you go out plane. there and bring out your own? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually eat that many yes. nuts, but I mean, the idea that they tell you not to, why don't they just find out if there's anybody first on the plane yeah. who might have a nut allergy? That would be far too rather, You know, rather than actually asking you not to eat any anyway, just in case yeah. somebody's got a nut allergy. Or when you apply online for your ticket, mm. it says, do you have any allergies? Oh, sorry, can't fly today. Yeah, we're busy. Yeah, well, the Nut Express is going on Sundays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be great, wouldn't it? The Nut Express to Rome goes once a week once from a Gatwick. Week if you're morning. allergic to nuts, get on that plane. No offence to because, anybody you know, who's got I'm a nut afraid, allergy. Yeah. yeah, but this is the rubbish, isn't it? You know, or I, 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 I think I might be a bit of an alcoholic, so I can't sit next to anybody who's having a drink on the plane. <laughs> Otherwise, it might send me into some paroxysm. Well, it's lu ludicrous, isn't it? My third one um, is my second one, rather I should say. It's some bloke called Slow Tie. Oh. I think his name is. He's a uh, he's a rapper. Right. Um, Slow Tie. And um, I keep calling him Pad Tie because it sounds as anything <laughs> I know much about really. This is the guy who held up Boris Johnson's severed head. You might remember. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Some uh, years Glastonbury, ago. wasn't it? Wasn't um, it was. At, I don't think it was at the. Was it the Brits? Was it? it was at some some awards ceremony. The Brits is, is tonight. Today, yeah. As it turns out, and they're already in trouble for not having enough women uh, on the gender fluid I thought section. we weren't supposed to believe in a difference between the well, genders. You know? Well, that's the, other, that's the other great dichotomy, isn't it? Because then they go, well, we haven't got enough representation of LGBT. Oh, but I didn't think you needed to have any exactly. uh, specific, you know, LGBT category. Um, we've also had, I mean, there's been some big music stories. There's a band called 1975, who I've never heard of. Um, I don't know whether you guys have. Yeah, they're quite good, actually. Some people have yeah, heard of them. The lead singer of 1975 has said that he's no longer going to be appearing at any festivals huh? that don't have at least a 50-50 um, uh, ter you know, sort of rotor of women and, and, and male performers right. and also gender neutral. Yeah, what about non binary Well, he's got them yeah. in there as well. I'm not quite sure whether he knows what 50 means. Slow press week? Do they yeah. have an album to launch? Well, apparently not. Except he's really? so determined, right, this guy, to make sure that the world is a better place that he's going to stick with the contract he's already got because he doesn't want to upset the people who have bought tickets. So he might be appearing at one or two festivals that he's already agreed to do to, yeah. that might not be as, as gender uh, s settled as he so, would like to be. So how's he going to do that? Is he going to go amongst the crowd and say, sorry, who are you identifying <laughs> as today? I don't know. But this slow tie guy, right, um, he was at some award ceremony the other night mm. and he was up on stage with a female comedian who I'm pretty oh, sure Catherine wasn't Jenkins. female. Oh, Catherine Jenkins. That's right. That's right. I well, saw not this. Catherine Jenkins. Is it Catherine uh, no, no, Jenkins? Catherine Jenkins. She's Catherine the opera Ryan. singer. Catherine Ryan, the comedian. Catherine Ryan, yeah. yeah. The Canadian and the thing comedian. that people forget about a lot of these rappers yeah. is that they're incredible misogynists, incredible sexists, and he was sort of burying his head in her breasts and, you know, leaning against her. And exactly. Trying, yeah. Doing really horrible stuff that anyone would just say, you know, back the hell off, man. Don't come anywhere near me. He then, as he gets booed by the crowd who think his, his, his appalling behaviour needs to be stopped, 
He then jumps off the stage, having thrown a couple of glasses at somebody in the crowd, and starts trying to have a punch up with the audience. Awesome. And this is a guy who was hailed. It was the NME Awards. That's what it was. He was hailed as Hero of the Year <laughs> so by the NME. Awesome. awesome. So he starts off, you know, getting hailed because he had this Boris Johnson amazing, you know, severed head moment, which was a rather bizarre thing to, to say well done on. He then, you know, rubs himself inappropriately up against a woman comedian and he then gets in a fight. So well done to, to him and to the NME for picking out this grand sort of saviour of modern culture. What an absolute bozo. It's rock and, and roll, plank. Mike. It's, it's like rock Stormzy and, roll. and Harry Styles <laughs> yeah. who came out and said, what, F Boris. Yeah, Stormzy, and the world's the greatest best. rebel. You know, he's so, he's so brave, he's decided to call off uh, this Southeast Asian tour because he's frightened of getting coronavirus. It's not oh. very street, oh, really? is it? Yeah, oh. he's cancelled the tour. Pathetic. It really yeah, is. That's <laughs> kind of sad, isn't it? It really, really is. Yeah. 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 So yeah. that's, I'm going to keep calling him Pad Thai from now on just for the Pad Thai, that but, works. But I think it's Slow Thai, yeah. the official name. And you know what? I'll forget his name probably as quickly as you You probably will. It. Yeah, so. You'll remember Pad Thai. He later, of course, Pad Thai, I'll remember. He did yeah. what everybody, of course, now does, which is to apologise for his bad behaviour and to say that he was going to try and become a better man. I think Catherine Ryan came out with a really nice tweet afterwards. She said, uh, she said something along the lines, and I'll paraphrase, that it, when people were expressing their concern for her with, the, with Pad Thai obviously rubbing himself up against her, she went, I didn't get this far in comedy without dealing with dickheads like this guy. <laughs> How did I miss this story? I know, it was, a, it was a sort of early part of the week, but I, I shall send you the link later on. But he'll certainly appear in the top ten, that's for sure. Number Love three it. for you, Mr Geddes. Oh, my goodness, Michael. Ah, uh, so many choices, so many choices. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to have to go with... Shamima Begum yes. and her new PR Oh, God, drive. that's a good one. <laughs> a, awesome. Yeah. I'm actually, we're going to get a, 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 a print for the office. Yeah. I think it'd be great. We might even get one of our contacts in Syria to run down and try and get her to sign it. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. yeah. I mean, tell us how she appeared in the latest so PR picture. She appeared, obviously, in much more traditional Western clothing. Yeah. Uh, I think she was colour clashing. Yeah. Is that, is she it? had a pink... That's it, with a purple. Oh, well, no, well, black's out this year, is That's it? it, black is out. Right. And she had some fairy lights for Valentine's, nice. which was nice. A nice touch. Um, yeah, not really within the Islamic uh, State playbook no. that I normally... Nor was the Union flag well, I mean, it is fashion cushion week. in <laughs> the it is, background. It is fashion week. Strategically maybe put. Was, maybe yeah. she was making a bid for some kind of runway slot. Yeah. You Just know? imagine it. Yeah, maybe <laughs> for balaclavas, I don't know. For but IS this year... Uh, yeah. We'll be wearing nose studs. It was a spring a little, look. It yeah. was a spring look. A little cool oh, she did have a nose stud, didn't she? A little cool She had, yes. she had a nose stud. No, she's got a nose stud. Yeah, 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 which was, I thought... Where would you get your nose point. pierced Isn't in that a refugee camp? Forward. That would be my question. Uh, eh? But who are, these, who are these people who are helping her out? It's the human rights lawyers it must that she's be. got on to. Yeah. Who's Who I had a bit of a run-in with on national TV. That was oh, fun. Did you? Yeah, we had a little bit of a row. Because he said, I'm not really sure that you know what you're talking about. And I said, no, you know, three years in Iraq and a couple of years in <laughs> Afghanistan. Yeah. I know nothing. Yeah, right. What do I know? Of course. Um, but yeah, I think, I think their little drive to try and get her back onto the public side, I think that ship has sailed. Also, did she not give a sort of interview in which she talked about what she liked to do? Yeah. Which yeah. was something like any normal, say, teenager in, in sort of uh, the West Midlands would like to mm -hmm. do. Yeah. Except, unfortunately, she didn't follow it up with. And then... I like to go and set fire to people in cages yes. or, you know, uh, tell my husband which person to go and behead. Or, or rape if it's a Yazidi woman yeah. or, yeah. Uh, you know, basically abuse or yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. you still have people on the left trying to say that this wasn't her fault. No. She doesn't have any agency. She was only she a was kid. She was just groomed by bad yeah. men. Right. A bit like Greta and Thunberg. I'm sorry, but, you know, she was 16, year old, 16 years old. She yeah. knew what she was doing. Yeah. yeah. It's just, yeah. whose side are we on? Great, when I was 16, I, I went with my first sort of girlfriend for my first ever dirty weekend to Torquay. You know, I didn't At think... At 16? Yeah. I didn't think... Michael. I went on national coaches. <laughs> I didn't think, I know, I'll go and join a mad fighting force in the Middle East <laughs> and start beheading a few people. No. You know, I just wanted to get laid. So, yeah. you know, I went to Torquay, where everybody goes. Exactly. You know? Yeah, no. It, it's, Most people go there to die, actually. Yeah, I mean, as to I, be honest... As I later discovered. It's funny, because when that whole Shamima Begum thing was kicking off, I actually went back into our archives to look at all the videos that were going out and stuff that the media was saying. And right back then, all the beheading videos were showing up, mm. all the various propaganda. She knew what they were doing. She knew exactly what she was doing when she went right. down there. Now, whether there was some sort of romantic, sort of naive, immature romanticism attached to it or not, uh, pff, 
anybody can guess. But the fact is, you know you're going down into a death cult. Yes. Okay, this isn't like a picnic she where also, you can go, oh, you know what, I don't if like it, I'll come home. it's not her fault. Yeah. She gave birth to three children, all of whom died. Yeah. And you'd have to go, you know, I'm sorry, it may well be that you were in a bad place, but I mean, that's a pretty dreadful legacy as yeah. a mother to say that you had three children, you let them all die for one reason or another. Well, I mean, to be honest, when she was down there, probably getting out would have been virtually impossible. Yeah. And I, you know, I kind of accept that truth. But beyond that, it was the, she went down with her girlfriends. They all knew what they were doing. And it would have been a process mm. of indoctrination and radicalization over a period of time. And it's yeah. a big, big old serious subject that we probably not today <laughs> want to cover. True. But, but I mean, it is plankish to expect to just stick a nose, uh, you know, nose stud in. And a, yes. a Union Jack, uh, you know, cushion behind you and a nice little set of fairy It's not really going to sway the general public opinion, I don't think it, it is. Yeah. I don't think I mean, it if is. I mean, if I said, who likes Shamima Begum on my Twitter today mm. and did a poll, I think we'd have a majority to the no, I, I don't. think you're absolutely right. Yeah. Emily, right your, your final nomination. So I was going to go for Extinction Rebellion, but I think we've had that covered. I guess we have. We've I covered mean, that. They're the other side of Cambridge Police, but I mean, yeah, you could go for something but else if you wish. I'd go for something similar, which is also police related. Um, I don't know if you saw the story, but there have been 120,000 non-crime hate yes. incidents reported yes. to the police in the last five years. Some, sometimes called non-crime crimes. Yes. Apparently. And these are guidelines by the College of Policing yeah. that came into play in 2014. And I think what's concerning here is that there's a there's a big censorious element to mm. this, you know, what can people now say? You have the police who should, in my view, be concentrating on violent crime yeah. and other crimes. And extinction taking, rebellion. Taking to Twitter to police what people say, whether it's on things to do with gender, whether it's on the trans debate, whether it's on, you know, just having a certain political view. I don't think that's the role of the police. No. I really don't, and I think most people don't. And even more so is, I think it's the South Wales police that have had thousands and thousands of these kind of complaints yes. registered. And this I is because Humberside they've been doing- I think Humberside got a few yeah, as well, didn't they? Because this guy won yes, a case, exactly. didn't he? So that's a good sign. Yeah. So that's a good sign. The High Court judge ruled in his favour mm. to say that he'd been hounded by the police. Right. They'd come to his office over the fact that he liked a tweet about that was mocking transgender yeah. people. And it was a limerick of some yeah. kind, you know, which it was know, it very, wasn't very basic, which wasn't particularly funny, but it certainly wasn't particularly yeah. offensive either. And uh, so this high court judge, he he ruled in his favor. He said that the police were acting like the Stasi or the mm. Gestapo. Yeah. And this was a this was a good moment for yeah. free speech. People it who was. believe in free speech. So but then you also see the police, South Wales police, actively on their social media, asking people to report mm. these incidents, asking people to not just take offense but go to the police with that yes. and we're not talking about you know violent crimes they're already crimes these are just incidents of offense right. that people are going to the police with and it's just a waste of resources and the guy who was Total exonerated waste. and who i think is is still taking the case to the uh, to the supreme court because i think he's won a civil action of some kind mm. but the criminal sort of um, non-criminal aspect of it is still on the record um, the guy. Yeah, that's turned, the point. He, it's on their record. Yeah, the guy who turned up to see him said oh. that he was basically talking to him about something that he thought. Is that those were his words? So we've actually come well, that, to police your thoughts. I think this guy who I think he was a former police officer. He was. And he, um, I think he stood outside the the court with a book with George Or's, George Orwell, um, 1984, yeah. to just make the point that you know. We shouldn't be policing people's thoughts. No. But it's but again, it comes back to the social media platforms about them policing hmm. the content that's on there. I mean, even in the wake of the whole Caroline Flack tragedy on yeah. the weekend, you, there, was so many, there was so much trolling still going yeah. on. I mean, I, I, put, I put a, a nice message out, as I'm sure a few people, I didn't know her personally, but I think it was a, just a nice wake up call for everybody yeah. to just say, look, just try and be nicer to each yeah, other yeah. rather than just being horrible and a keyboard warrior. But even then, People were trolling other people. Actually, someone trolled on my comments right. as well. Yeah. And sadly, yeah. it was someone I knew as well. I was like, really I sent bizarre. him a DM and just went, you're an idiot, yeah. you know, go away. Yeah, what are you thinking? Yeah. No, there was a lot of idiocy around that particular episode, but I just thought I'd leave that out uh, this week only because it is still, you know, one of it's those quite terrible, sensitive, terrible yeah. stories. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it, there's a lot of hypocrisy out there, as, as there always is. My final one. Uh, is actually going to be a company, and this is a very late entry, mm. suggested by somebody who's already been on the panel here uh, to me today, and it's a company called Igloo Regeneration, 
And this is a company who are based in Manchester, who are apparently one of the foremost sort of modern property companies in Britain. I can't say I've heard of them, but I had a quick look at their company's house record, and they seem to make quite a lot of money, and they right. seem to be quite a successful company. They have just issued this edict, right? If you wish to reclaim expenses for any food that you may eat over the course of your working day, whether it be you know near the office or on a trip that you've made, that will be fine. You can get remuneration in the normal way, but only if it's vegetarian. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Going, what? Oh well. So if you I'll, want to have I'll a bacon sarnie, I don't need so, that one. So now. if you want a bacon sarnie, yeah. uh, they say it's absolutely fine if you would like to do that, but you will not be able to reclaim it on expenses. This kind of thing is happening a oh. lot. I, uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, really? Uh. I did a talk at um, Essex University, and um, the only options they had were vegan. Really? Yes. They really? tried this at Goldsmiths, didn't they? And then they reversed it. Do you remember they banned burgers oh, yeah. at Goldsmiths last year yeah. uh, on the grounds that it would save the planet? And they've all done this equation, this calculation that says, you know, if you go vegan and or vegetarian, you will literally save this amount of carbon, which is absolute and utter bollocks, isn't it? Because you know what? How, I, I how do they it. even know? Because yeah. the, the, the cow that you would have had the, uh, the burger from or the pig that you would have had the bacon from has already been slaughtered. Yeah. Right? So you're not actually stopping anything from happening. All you're doing is not eating food which has already been made mm. and which will end up presumably in landfill. Will it? I don't yeah, know. Probably. Or, or fed to your dog. But I think one of the worst, <laughs> the worst catalysts of this, I don't know whether you guys are seeing Game Changers no. on Netflix. No. no. Okay, so I recommend that you do. Mm. So this is, so literally every newly converted vegan, I guarantee has watched Game Changers, <laughs> which is this documentary, <laughs> which seriously. Oh, I think I've heard sure, of it now. Make sure you've got a bag of salt <laughs> to stick your fist into right. when you're watching it. It's, it. Don't get me wrong, there's some great messages that come across on it, and but... It, it literally will come off it. It's brilliant. It's cult-like almost yeah. in terms of you come off and go, well, uh, I won't have that burger today then. Right. <laughs> and because it's so vegan focused and it's all about carbon footprint okay. and, and what it will do to you. But that every, literally everybody I know who's changed or turned to vegan mm. momentarily, I should add, because quite a few of them I sort of caught with a bacon yeah. sarnie or, or go, right. let's go out for a steak well. <laughs> <laughs> I'd watch that yeah. program. Okay, but well, this really sounds just, great. Is, I mean, Love apparently it. they say that they had, um, you know, staff consultation about it, and there were some people who weren't all that keen. But they basically took a, a, a view that, you know, this was what they wanted to do to be a progressive and a kind of you know Where responsible company. I think they're in Manchester. Cambridge? No, okay. no, Manchester. well, yeah. Um, I just find it incredible that they want to control other people to such an extent. You know, what difference does it make? I mean, it's one thing yeah. to say, you know, we expect you to turn up for work. Uh, not drunk. We expect you not to take illegal drugs, um, you know, while you're working for the company, or indeed yeah. while you're not working for the mm -hmm. company. But to say we don't expect you to eat meat, also, it's which is an entirely, it's you know, normal part of everyday kind of life. Kind authoritarian. It is Definitely. a bit, isn't it? Yeah. And it's just crazy. I mean, like, if you look at the stats, if you look at how little carbon emissions we have mm. in the UK, one percent of the entire world. Yeah. If, if you know, China was just to cut its coal use by yeah. half, yeah. that would be the equivalent of the whole of the EU plus us. Yeah you know, going completely neutral. Right. Yeah. So it's just, you know, they're, they're picking at the edges yeah. instead of confronting the I actual... I mean, in this building, we've got a very well-appointed canteen and they have a vegan um, sort of section of, of the canteen, which you can happily go to. But Is it have... popular, Mike? That's fine. Well, lots of people go there. It's fine. I don't. I literally have no problem. If you want to be a vegan, You've not be been a vegan. there, though, have you, Mike? I, I haven't, actually. But, I mean, <laughs> I've looked at it once or twice and thought, actually, that looks all right. I might have that. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't really eat there that much, to be honest, mm. you know, because I go to much better restaurants. Um, but the bottom line is you go that, for lunches, you? you know, the bottom line is, is that they have the whole shebang there. They don't go, you can only work here if you're a vegetarian mm. and you can only claim back the money that you've spent on the trip that you've made and the service station that you've stopped at because you've eaten something vegan. They have made a slight proviso that says if, however, you are gluten intolerant um, and you weren't able to find something that was a, a vegetarian option, you are allowed to have some meat and charge it back. So it's already falling apart around its awesome. ears. Awesome. So I'd immediately pull the gluten card. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> you right. can have your bacon. And I'll be stopping at Little Chef. <laughs> every, every but time how I is stop. it that the same kind of woke generation insists that, um, you know, everyone has to be treated the same and then they start treating people differently? Do you see what I'm saying? I mean, well, like, I rarely yeah. conversation. Anyone who doesn't fit into their worldview. Like, I rarely, uh, I rarely a situation with, uh, with the trans argument. Everybody has to be treated the same. 
unless you want to have a bacon sandwich. <laughs> you know, it doesn't really, it doesn't it compute, does it? I'm just confused. I know, we all are. It's I'm, illogical. I'm just confused. We I all are. To be honest, I'm just going to carve my own little path. And, you okay. Know, it's the best I can offer. That's <laughs> all you can do. Just don't tell anybody what you're doing. Just don't tell you know, try not to claim any expenses. You know, and just keep yourself to yourself. But it's that's but how it, it'll but be. But it is mad, and I and I and it, it does de- it kind of taking the amusement to one side. It does depress me somewhat because it is this almost you can't say something without someone being yeah. offended by it. Mm. I mean, and there are so many so many tweets in my drafts that I have yes. not sent yes. that I've literally looked at. And the worst thing is never ever tweet when drunk. No, which no. I have a lot of drafts <laughs> yeah. from that as a result. No, it's a very good idea. And, there are so many times I just want to take my normal everyday work yeah. Yeah. world but there was a, and takes, transpose but it. There's it. a time that, that you, it takes you to become that mature on Twitter, though, because, you know, probably beforehand, maybe you, did, you weren't as mature. Now I'm, I sort of sit there and I do the same thing and I'll go, do you know what? If I don't send this, it really doesn't matter. So I'm yeah. not going to send it. You have little yeah. fights, though, don't you? I do have like, my little <laughs> fights. I do have my little fights. I mean, I've had fights with vegans, cyclists. I once had some Pretty Spaniards, much everybody, Spaniards attacking me once oh, no. for, putting paella, awesome. for, what? for putting chorizo oh, in paella. I do paella. remember that. Yeah, They yeah. called me a terrorist. Yeah. Oh, you're not supposed to do that? Well, actually, um, well, my argument is you can, because actually I've got a paella cookbook. Can you um, not put chorizo on? You can put anything you want that. in it. It is effectively Spanish shepherd's pie. Yeah. So, you know, it doesn't matter what you put in it. But the purists will say <laughs> that it should not have chorizo in it. Really? And they, what do you and have then? I don't get it. Well, instead of chorizo? Yeah. Well, you put rabbit in it. You can put uh, oh, really? chicken, um, yeah. fish. I mean, technically but speaking. Not chorizo. But not Why chorizo. Why not chorizo? Oh, no. I think that's very bigoted. <laughs> yeah, I think so. The, the, I mean, you know, we should stand up for the chorizo We should here. stand up for the chorizo, exactly. yeah, exactly. But you're right. I mean, you can have a row with almost any section of the of oh, the, yeah. uh, the public on social media, but it doesn't represent the public. I also, think. how many people in Cambridge do you think were looking at what was going on in the lawn, thinking they wanted to stop it, yeah. thinking, why is this happening? Mm. And yet they kind of, they couldn't. They sort of do you know the censored themselves. Yeah. Do you know no, the because they, they would probably be arrested. would have, and then they would have been arrested. They would have been arrested, exactly. been arrested yeah. for yeah. trying to stop yeah. something which is technically it's unlawful. It's just messed yeah. up. Yeah. You yeah. know, the whole idea of a citizen's arrest has gone out the window, hasn't it? That's uh, true. No one it, does it anymore. No. So, yeah, no, there's, uh, it, it's about understanding the connotations and also mm. the process and procedure. You can yeah. actually still affect it, but the problem is that by the time the PCOs, well, probably not the PCOs because they may have run away. No, they I'm can't kidding. arrest anybody. I mean, you've got more powers of arrest than they have. You're, well, to be honest, you've got as equal powers mm. almost to a certain extent, yeah. and it's just about process. But the mm. problem is, is that if you get, I mean, I've had a couple of occasions where I've intervened in people who've been mugged, yeah. and this is like only two times in the, like the last ten years or whatever. Um, and this is just people on the street or people who've, who've lost base. And the problem is, is that one per, once one person gets involved, everybody gets else mm. is, get everybody else gets involved. So you could hang on to the perpetrator waiting for the police to respond or taking them to the barrier at the tube station or whatever. But then you've got about 10 other guys you're trying to beat off who want to give them a shooting. Yeah, right. So, you know, it becomes an, almost a nightmare. It's not worth doing. No, almost. So we're yeah. at the point now of excitement because this is where I say to you, right, so, you're, so your three are, just repeat. Okay, so three my are. three were uh, Sadiq Khan, yeah. again, yeah. Um, was the Labour Party, the Labour Party as a whole, yeah. and lovely Shamima Begum. Shamima Begum, I like that. I like That's that a, a lot. One. Right, your three, Emily, are? And mine were Megan. Yeah. Uh, Rebecca Long Bailey. Yeah. And the College of Policing. Yes. That's great. See, I love all those. And I've got, I've got uh, pad tie, as I call him. Yeah. Um, slow tie. Um, <laughs> I've got the Cambridge Police. Right. Um, and then finally, uh, the thing we were just talking about, this company, Igloo, Igloo, Igloo. Regeneration. Yeah. Uh, so now I'm going to pick the one I like best out of yours. Okay. And I think it's Jemima Begum. Mm. Always a winner. One. I think that's a good one. Always a winner. Now you get to choose your favourite one of Emily's, and then she gets to choose her favourite one of mine. I am going to go with Extinction Rebellion. She didn't do Extinction Rebellion. You, did no, you? Cambridge Police. Uh, no, you did. No, Cambridge. I did Cambridge Police. Okay. So it's I'm not that complicated. Down. This. I did the College of Police. I am over the College of Police. Over the hate crimes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nobody's so. been arresting the wrong people for <laughs> years. <laughs> Rebecca Long Bailey. Yeah, that's a good one. There we go. We go, go Rebecca Long Bailey. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now you choose. And my... for you, I think it's got to be Pad Thai Slow Thai. Yeah, Slow Thai. Okay. All right. So we have to basically agree on which one is the least relevant in that case. The least relevant. I wonder if it's Rebecca Long Bailey because she's going to be in it quite a lot. That's true. She'll come and back. And she has week been in it week. before. And sometimes what I say at this point is that, you know, a pad tie, slow tie, is not likely to be in it again. And it is Shemima, a brunt today. And Shemima Begin may not be in it again, although she may. Yeah. 
So should we agree to kick out Rebecca Long Bailey? It still means she comes in at number three. Yeah, let's boot her out. Let's boot She'll her out back. to three. I'm sure she will. <laughs> All right. So who? Like would... the proverbial penny. And we, we can do this by a show of hands because it looks good on the camera. Um, who will go for Shemima Begum? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> that was easy. So that's unanimous. There you go. So Shemima Begum is wow. plank of the week. Wow. It's a good one. That is very good. I feel honoured. That is true. Do I get a prize? Yes, you do. Do I get a prize? I'll, I'll be I taking you into another room <laughs> for a bacon to sandwich. show you <laughs> the cuddly toy selection <laughs> later. <laughs> but you won't be able to claim it by the expenses. That frightens I'm me, I'm afraid. Michael. I know. You should be frightened. <laughs> You've been in some dangerous places, but you haven't been here. That is a hostile environment. I don't want to visit. It certainly is. Yeah. Will, Will Keddies, uh, Emily Carver, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. And we'll be back with another Plank of the Week. Who's going to win next week?